In this video, Vince and I made a new game, Space Station Zero. The wait has ended. Space Station Zero is finally here. The next title from me and Vince, Snarling Badger Studios. Um, it is ready to buy right now, as a matter of fact. If you're interested, spacestationzerogame.com. You can buy it in PDF, print on demand. And if you get the print on demand, you get the PDF for free. So go and check that out. It is 124 pages, roughly, which is about twice what Rain in Hell was. And it's sci-fi, skirmish, miniature agnostic, solo play, co-op play, adversarial play, all that stuff's included, and uh, you should check it out if you're interested. But first, I'll tell you a little bit about the story. Whenever a species, a culture, gets to the point where they figure out how to go faster than the speed of light with some sort of spaceship, whether it's warp drive, uh, hyperspace, jump drive, whatever, sometimes, sometimes when it happens, things go real bad, and um, the ship just sort of gets disassembled and it turned into constituent atoms and spread over, I don't know, six or seven different parsecs. And, and you never hear from those folks again, generally, because they're completely disassembled and whatnot. But every once in a great while, what happens is that uh, the ship doesn't blow apart. The ship just ends up in a really, really, really odd place in space. Space is vast and mostly empty. But this is the vastest, most emptiest area of space that has ever been. Hundreds and hundreds of billions of light years in every direction from where you've popped out of your warp drive or whatever, there's nothing. Not an uh, asteroid, not, a, not a, a dust cloud, nothing. It's just completely empty. You can barely see the stars off in the distance with your most powerful sensors. And there's nothing around. You'll never, ever reach anything with the speed of the engines that you've got on this vehicle, and you're all going to die out here. And that's the way it works. There's nothing around. Except for the giant space station that is right, I mean, really, really big, really close. Like when we popped out of like the war, it was right there. And it's hailing us. And it's hailing us in our language. So the crew eventually decides to land at the uh, assigned, you know, landing bay. And there are hundreds and hundreds of other ships in this massive, massive uh, bay of every kind of weird, different design, stuff you've never seen before. No one in your crew has ever seen this kind of stuff. And there's kind of this massive sort of lobby area filled with aliens of all kinds of different species, and you've never seen any of these species before. But you can all understand each other. And you can even read the graffiti that's been, you know, sprayed on the walls and stuff like that. No one quite understands how or why, but that's the case. There's food. There's things to drink. Replicators have been brought off ships and all kinds of things like that. People are growing stuff. People are brewing their own weird alcoholic beverages that, you know, work with their particular species and whatever. But anyway, um, and everything seems to be relatively safe here, but there's no way to figure out how to get back home. And what are you going to do, you know, for the rest of your days other than maybe die of alcohol poisoning? Well. What if we were to explore the ship? It's pretty big. There might be some mysteries to solve. Maybe we can figure out how to get back home. And that is what you do in Space Station Zero when you're playing the solo or co-op game. If you play adversarial against a friend, then you are a crew versus another crew who have bumped into each other someplace out in the space station and there's been some sort of misunderstanding, even though you can all understand each other's languages just fine. But still, that's what that battle is happening there. In this situation, if you play solo and co-op, though, you have up to 24 uh, branching scenarios that build the narrative for what happens as you travel or try to travel through this space station and discover its secrets. Uh, we've got a whole table of contents here, a short story that kind of explains what I just sort of explained, and then we get right into playing the game. Not a ton of fluff in here. We want to keep it light because we want to get you playing the game as quickly as possible. Um, there's information on dice rolling and an example of play and how the stats work and all that kind of stuff. And then eventually we get into movement and combat. And uh, there's all kinds of amazing illustrations by Will Kirkby, uh, a person we found online who does amazing work. Uh, most recent stuff he's been doing is for uh, Dark Horse Comics, a bunch of the Critical Role um, comics that, that, that they've been doing. And uh, when I saw his work, I reached out to him and this is the guy that had to do this. So. Anyway, um, as you're going through, you start creating your crew, 
And uh, so here's a little area where they're all kind of hanging out and, you know, having snacks and sitting around and just deciding to eventually die of old age. Uh, but your crew has decided to go on. So you've got medical crew, science, uh, warships, shipping ships, uh, pirate ships, exploration ships, kind of like factions in some game. When you build your crew, your crew is basically either a, it's always a commander, and then it's either four models, six models, or eight models. That's pretty much it. That's the entire kind of, it's not the entire list building, but it's how you decide your list. And it partially decides on, honestly, do you want to play more kind of robust, skilled, uh, you know, elite troops, four of them, or more heading towards the rookies who are maybe a little bit weedier, but there's, you know, there's more of them and that kind of stuff with the eight models. You kind of choose in there, and then the sixth thing is in, in between. But um, that's what you do. You pick how many models you're going to have. You then pick what kind of ship you came in on. And then after that, you have different types of officers, medical officers, soldiers, engineers. And every kind of ship can have certain types, and some ships can only have those types, and there's all kinds of different things. And that's how you build your crew and then decide to start going through and searching through the entire uh, space station. After the game is done, your particular you know, mission, whatever it is, there's a post-game process because, again, this is a campaign-style game, and your models can uh, basically advance via XP and all kinds of things like that. They can also die, and so sometimes that's what happens over here under injuries and death, and then you get experience, and then you go on from there. Now, this is the beginning of the challenges area. Think scenarios, basically. Like I said, there are 24 different branching narrative um, things in this game. You start out with challenge number one, docking bay access port as you leave the docking bay. When you get done, you're going to roll on a thing to find out what your next challenge is. That's not always the case. There are some of these challenges that as you move forward at the end of a challenge, if you complete it, you get to pick and go, well, I'm either going to go this way or I'm going to go that way. And then you kind of can go from there. But that first one, it's pretty random. There are also some challenges that you finish, and they are what is known as no return challenges, meaning you're not going to be able to go back. So if you need to go back a different direction or do something like that, once you get past this no return challenge, there is no going back, so you just have to keep going the way you're going. The game is played on a small board. Again, like Rain and Hell, 22 by 30. But you could go 2 foot by 2 foot. You could go 3 foot by 3 foot. You use whatever you want. But... 22 by 30 boards are relatively easy to find now because of Kill Team and, and, and uh, you know, Warcry and such like that. You uh, just use sci-fi terrain. Uh, each one of the challenges explains to you kind of like these are areas that you sort of try to have to have some terrain in, but there's also rules on how to spread around scattered terrain and things like that. Um, you need, like I said, between five and nine models for your crew, depending on what size crew you want to go with. And then you need maybe some sort of robots and some mutants for bad guys. And that's about it. It's a fun kind of story-driven game when you play solo or co-op. And if you want to play adversarial, there's six different missions in there for you to play against your friends if you want to go down that road as well. We're really excited for you folks to be able to get your hands on it. And you can get it right now at spacestationzerogame.com. You can get it in PDF. You can get it in print-on-demand. And if you order print-on-demand, you'll also get the PDF for free. So you can start reading it right now while they get, you know, get printed and ship it and the whole deal, all that kind of stuff. As I said, it's twice as thick as our last game. Uh, Rain and Hell is 64 pages. This new one is 124 pages, so just shy of twice as thick. It, is it twice the cost? No, no, it's not. Um, it's actually $13 for the PDF and $18 plus shipping for the print version, which includes the PDF. So it's about three bucks more than our previous game. We're really glad to be able to get this out to you folks. We've really enjoyed um, the time that we've spent putting it together, uh, working with the artists, working with each other to get stuff done. This is an idea that came from an idea that Vince has had, you know, banging around in his skull for about a decade. Originally, he wanted this to be an RPG before he and I started working together. And then after we got done with Rain and Hell, he was like, you know, I got this idea. And then here we are today with Space Station Zero. So if you get the chance, Definitely take a look at it. We have, in, in, in other videos here, um, a, a what is it kind of like brief overview of the game. We also have a battle report as well that Vince did. And we have kind of a, here's an example of the play loop, like how you do a single turn video as well. You can check those all out Pachow up here in the playlist. So if you get the chance, I'd be really happy, and I think Vince would as well, if you got to take a look at least at the listings, watch those videos. And if you're interested, again, like I said, spacestationzerogame.com.
www.thepowerofpositivity.com. Thanks for watching.